Many countries' borders make sense. They follow rivers, mountain ranges, or coastlines. But some countries' borders don't seem to make any sense at all. This is Mad Maps, where we look at some of the world's strangest borders. This time, we're going to talk about a border that's particularly strange for two reasons. It's not even supposed to exist, but it appears seemingly out of nowhere. This process is called borderization, and it concerns Georgia and Russia. Here are the two breakaway regions of Georgia, South Ossetia and Abkhazia. The borders between them and the rest of Georgia have three names, depending on who you ask. For Georgia, these are occupation lines. For the EU, these are administrative boundary lines. For Russia, these are borders between independent states. Regardless, the de facto authorities of the breakaway regions, with heavy ground support from Russia, have been busy for years turning the boundaries into something that looks like a hard international border. In some sections, there's barbed wire, fences, signs, patrols and surveillance. And quite a few Russian military bases. Glancing at Google Maps, this section here is particularly confusing. There is the administrative line between two Georgian regions and another mysterious line crisscrossing through. Amnesty International has reported, based on information from the Georgian government, that sometimes the elusive border moves a few hundred meters to a few kilometers further into Georgia-controlled territory because the maps can be outdated. In 2015, a border sign appeared near the village of Orkosan, 200 meters from a main highway. Over a kilometer of the Baku Supsa gas pipeline was left behind it. This is 148 hectares further into previously Georgia-controlled territory. So how did we end up here? We need to rewind to 2008, when Georgia and Russia fought a five-day war. The breakaway regions were in a state of de facto independence and had Russian military support. As Georgia was eyeing NATO membership, Russia further increased its military presence, which led to open hostilities. After the war, Russia recognized the independence of the two regions and around 2011, the borderization started. It's the locals who pay the price. Let's say you're a villager living close to the boundary line. One morning, you could wake up and discover that some of your land is now on the other side of a fence. Or you work your land, but then get arrested for illegally crossing the border. Yet you are legally still in the same country, Georgia. Over a thousand Georgians have been arrested, and some of them jailed, for alleged trespassing. Sometimes there's no barbed wire or signs to even alert them. The Kirbali village, for example, is now considered a dangerous place, where almost every family has someone who has been arrested and taken to South Ossetia. <laughs> The people in the Atoichi village also live in constant fear. The first fences were erected there in 2014 and the village lost 30 hectares of arable land. Grigor Birtvelishvili has two hectares of land that he can no longer access. Amnesty International has called on Russia and the de facto authorities to stop restricting the movement of locals who risk losing their livelihood. It has also said that Georgia should provide financial support and look for opportunities to negotiate. But Russia has said its border guards are there as a part of an agreement with South Ossetia and the border posts are there for safety. It also claims South Ossetia is open to dialogue with Georgia. And we have a stalemate because Georgia and the huge majority of the international community considers Abkhazia and South Ossetia its territory occupied by Russia. Georgia also says the borderization is Moscow's destructive and deliberate policy against them. 